Hi, this is Gary. Here we are in Photoshop CS5. I want to show you the new Refine Edge command because it's been um, greatly improved. So um, basically, I started out with two pre-made alpha channels. I made one for the book, and I made one which is just a very crude shape of our model. And this, believe it or not, is the selection we're going to turn into a mask and use. Refine Edge will do the rest. Here's how it works. Okay, I'm going to call up that alpha channel as a selection by going Option Command 7, or that would be all Control 7 on the PC. And I'm going to go right for Refine Edge under the Select menu. Well, no, I'm sorry. First, I'm going to create a layer mask. And when I add a layer mask to an active selection, it turns that selection into a layer mask, which is very convenient. Now, I'm going to go to Color, I'm sorry, Refine Mask. And um, here's the new Refine Mask dialog box. Um, you know, most of these controls should be familiar, like, you know, the view uh, has changed location, but it's the same options as before. Uh, but here's the new part, the edge detection. And this is where Refine Edge performs its magic. So basically, I'm going to increase the radius of the edge detection to about 50-ish. Now watch what happens. All of a sudden, look, we've got a pretty reasonable extraction already, right? Instead of that crude, you know, hard edge thing, we have some nice detail in the hair. Um, so basically, at this point, I can take the edge detection brush and paint around the model's glasses to include them in the mask. And it's going to calculate, and there we go. So uh, on the right side here, I want to try and get more hair. So I'm going to take my brush, my edge detection brush. I'll increase its size a little bit by hitting the right bracket key. And I'm just going to paint in. And when you paint with the edge detection brush, it obviously reveals the underlying layers, background. But because it's detecting edges, it'll try and distinguish between the hair and its background. So that's pretty good. Look at that. We have some nice hair detail there. Maybe try one more time, see if I can get any more. All right. That's actually not bad. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hit OK. Now, at this point, I want to save this history state. So I'm going to go my take my history palette, create a snapshot. I'm going to call this snapshot right for the right side of her head. All right, I'll close the history palette. I'm going to run the refine edge command again, but notice it says refine mask because I've got an active, I've got a mask selected. This time, I'm going to increase the radius to about 120 ish, and we're working on the left side of her head, so let's check that out. And I've got a little more hair, um, and if you click the show radius checkbox, you can see that the area that's visible is where edge detection is working. So I can take my edge detection brush and try and paint in some more hair and see if we can get any more that way. But not really. So, all right, I'm going to turn off show radius because we actually don't need it. Oh, before we do, I'll just show you very quickly here. I'll click it again and then click smart radius because smart radius shows you exactly where uh, edge detection's radius. Uh, it, see, it clamps down in areas where it's, it has a, has a hard edge and where there's hair. Well, I painted that in, but you can see where these bumpy spots are. There's, it's detected some hair. But I'm going to increase the entire selection by going shift edge. I'm going to move it to the right to about 50%. Okay? Uh, what this effectively does is, is increase the entire selection. This used to be called Expand, Contract in the old Refine Edge dialog box, but check it out. We've got a lot more hair strands over here. If I move it a little farther, I might even be able to get more. And yes, look at that. I like that. I'm going to paint with the edge detection brush a little more, see if I can grab even more. And looking good. Okay. Except now I have a real mess on the right side, but that's okay. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go back to my history palette. I'm going to create a snapshot of this state. I'm going to call this left. Okay, now I'm going to activate my history brush on the right history state. 
making sure I select my history brush, its opacity is set to about 50% and the mode is normal. So I'm going to paint the right history state onto this right side here with an opacity of 50%. I can gradually add more darkening until I get it close to what I want. So I'm just taking a few passes here. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. All right, so if we zoom out, let me close my history palette, zoom out a little bit to try and evaluate how well we've done. And okay, you know what? I can live with that because there's a sun in the background and you would see some glow here. So last thing I'm gonna do is call up my book channel, which was at Command-6. So going back to my layers, go Option-Command-6 to get that active selection and fill it with white, drop the selection, and we're done. Okay, uh, this was just a rough, you know, uh, quick demo. Explore it yourself and see what you can come up with. See you next time.